Hey everyone, my name is Nate and I'm a technical writer at Move. In this video, I'll be giving you a quick demo of our open source Watchman API, which allows you to search many different trade sanctions lists. Supported lists are currently only for the US, but we have plans to expand this project and add ones from Europe and Asia too. I'm going to start off by showing you how to conduct a few different types of searches using the API. The easiest way to get everything set up is to use Docker, and I'm gonna run the latest Docker image for the project by copying over this docker run command. This can all be found in the project readme. So let's open up this terminal tab, clear the output, and paste this in. It's going to be running on port 8084, and this does take a second, so in the meantime we can take a look at the API documentation. There's a lot of different endpoints for this API, a lot more than some of our other ones, and for this video I'm just going to focus on the basics. The first thing that I'm going to do is get some company info using an ID. So I have the official SDN list downloaded from the OFAC website. As you can see next to every entry, there's a unique ID. And we can just use this ID to pull some info about a company or customer. So let's grab a company one. How about this one? And back in the terminal, in the new tab, we can type in curl localhost port number OFAC slash companies and then plug in the ID. Now if we break down this output a little bit, first you have some general info about the company, followed by some addresses and alternate names. Now you can do something almost identical for customers, just change companies to customers, and then plug in the appropriate ID. Now if we try to search for a company using this endpoint, it's going to give us null. So you have to make sure that it is in fact a person. So let's find somebody, 2674 and the output's very similar. One more cool thing that you can do for company and customer specific searches is update an entry by adding a status. To do this, you can use put instead of get for basically what we just did. So that command is gonna look like curl, and then an X flag, put, and a D flag for our data type, which is gonna be JSON. And I have a file set up already called change.json, and this is the contents. So the file has to have a status set to either exception or unsafe, and then notes. And the notes can be whatever you want. We have that file name already. And then the next thing that you have to do is an h flag and set a user ID. This is mainly just for documentation. And uh, I'm just going to set this to 12345. Lastly, you have your standard localhost port number. And it's going to be the same endpoint. So let's do a customer's one. And the ID at the end is 2674. As long as you don't get an error, that means it went through. So if we go back here and uh, look for this output again, at the bottom, now you'll see that the status is set to what we just had. So that's our ID. Our note is cleared. Our um, status is going to be exception. And then it also has a timestamp. You can also conduct a general search that supports a lot of different parameters. If we take a look at the documentation, it's down here, and this is a list of all the different parameters. By default, this is gonna give you a bunch of results, so it's always a good idea to set a limit, and those results are gonna be sorted by match percentage. So let's conduct a search for Midco Finance. I know that that is a valid entry. That's going to look like curl localhost port number search. And then we have a question mark to indicate that we're going to start listing parameters. The first one I'm going to do is set name to midco plus finance. The plus represents a space. And now an ampersand separates parameters. So the last one I'm going to do is set a limit to one. I'm also going to format this using uh, JQ. So these are the results. It's given us one match for each of these categories and then also the match percentage at the bottom. There are a lot of different search settings that you can do to tweak things like the match percentage and then also even environmental variables to mess around with for this API depending on your needs. So that's all I'm going to cover for this video just to keep it short. Another major feature of this API is actually webhooks but I'm most likely going to make a separate video for that. 
Please leave any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. And thanks for checking out the Move Watchman API tutorial.